thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to be in Africa. Always a pleasure to have friends uh, around. We have many of the fellow who train in our department to back to their country. So I'm pleased to be here. Uh, I have a couple talks today. And the first talk is related to middle molecules. And this is, uh, I have, uh, if you want to have my conflict of interest, you can go to IDTA uh, website. It's public. Uh, we want to go together to define the uremic toxin uh, to introduce you the middle molecule, which is old uh, phenomena described maybe in early 80. And I show you how we progress the role of the ceramic toxin, uh, the middle molecule, and our patient. The story is simple. If uh, when you have a chronic kidney disease, you have an accumulation of uremic toxin, then this uremic toxin have two actions. One of them is CKD complication, like cardiovascular complication. Another one is in accelerate CKD progression. And if one day have in CKD progression uh, to do, uh, advanced stage, this complication become more important. Until 20 years ago, there were no structure definition of uremic toxin. And we, uh, as a European group of UTOX, define this uh, uremic toxin uh, that three family, one of them is small water. I will not have time to speak about the urea and phosphate, but urea is gaining now a place to be a toxic, which uh, many nephrologists think, still think that is not toxic. We are we'll focus today on middle molecules. The, one of this middle molecule is well known for you, beta-2 microglobulin, but it's all additional like MGF-23 with uh, ages with apparent uh, appears uh, recently. The last family which is not well known at all, it's uh, small molecules, but it is linked to protein. What we call protein bound compound, like indoxyl sulfate or paracrisyl sulfate, which is very difficult to clear. So none of dialysis technique actually can clear a change the level of these molecules. I don't have time to develop this protein bound today. We will focus on the middle molecule. But I would like to f give you a few idea to fix. Initially, when we wrote this paper in Kidney International, we had 100 uremic toxins. Later on, the number increased to 150, but it is only the top of the iceberg. If you look, what we did uh, in 2006, have a proteomic evaluation in plasma in hemodialysis patient against the control, you can see that we have 25 polypeptides who are more frequent in hemodialysis patient. And we are lucky because uh, we can identify one of them, which is uh, complement factor 3, C3F. C3F is one of the product of the cleavage of C3B. We never uh, do it in the routine analysis. I ask my immunologist to develop ELISA for C3F to have uh, define this 3F, said they are not interesting. <laughs> but some data, and all data uh, in 80, showing that this C3F is uh, enhanced vascular permeability. So, Probably we will have more and more uremic toxin using this omic technique, like proteomic, metabolomic, whatever. And so this is the question will be become more complicated. The second point you keep in mind, many of uh, the work done in the 80 is related to stage 5D in dialysis. And then in dialysis, you have everything elevated. But if you Look, starting stage one, two, three, four, five, some of this uremic toxin like indoxyl sulfate, sclerostin, 
or MGF-23 to increase early on as, for example, phosphate and PTH will increase only later on. So you need to define the stage to define your type of uremic toxin. Not all uremic toxin are elevated in stage two and three. The second point here, we speak about the accumulation of uremic toxin, but uremic toxicity may be not only accumulation, but you can lose some of the material, you know, for erythropoietin, for vitamin D. So it is not completely uh, covering everything, this uremic toxin. Uremic toxicity goes behind uh, uremic toxin. So the family of middle molecule, I have the list. Every day we have a new one and it's coming in the list. And we, are, we will try to uh, uh, just remember you while protein bound molecule, which is the third family, is essentially coming from the intestine, from gut. This molecule of middle molecules is especially endogenously one, like cytokine, FGF23. And this is a play a role in hemostasis and corrective mechanism. They increase the PTH to overcome the bone resistance. The molecular weight is going with one, you know, is 12, uh, 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 no, to, yeah, to 12 uh, kilodalton is beta 2 microglobulin, but it goes up to FGF23 with 35. So you can see there are large uh, spectrum of molecular weight. So until now, just I remember you, uh, the, our dialyzer uh, uh, membrane has got until maybe 15 to 20. They are not clearing all of this one, not clearing IL-6, not clearing uh, the light chain kappa or lambda. Some of them have some absorption, but the clearance was not there. So let's uh, uh, do so. Some of them, we have this work done, done in my department. Let's start with beta-2 microglobulin. All of you are aware about beta-2 microglobulin. We use it as a marker of clearance in dialysis patient. And so this is mean that uh, if we have a good clearance of beta-2 microglobulin, we are happy. But we show that if you go to stage two, three, four, five, and 5D, this is cohort uh, coming from Amiens. And you can see that this beta-2 increase slightly in stage two, three, continue to increase and reach the maximum in uh, dialysis patient. So beta-2 is not in dialysis patient. They are also in pre-dialysis patient. This is increase of beta-2. <coughs> it's very important because we have shown that, <coughs> sorry, uh, higher level of beta-2 uh, is associated with all cause mortality and uh, cardiovascular mortality, even if you adjust for body factor by Cox model. This is important because later on, a second paper published in American Journal of Kidney Disease, they used several markers, let's focus on beta-2, and they look for different outcome, in stage renal disease, all cause mortality, cardiovascular event. And let's start with cardiovascular event. We see that even they have a combination, there's very significant correlation predictor of all cause mortality, similar for uh, all cause mortality, while the beta 2 is not predicting progression to end stage renal disease. So, beta 2, it could be a marker. We cannot modify the level of the marker. But in our hands, beta-2 is a marker of inflammation. And this is one of the idea to come. If we modify the inflammation, we can modify the level of beta-2. All generation uh, nephrologists are aware about the toxicity of beta-2, amyloidosis, and the articulation in 80, when we used non-compatible membrane. There were two theories. One of them is beta-2 is a marker. Another one is beta-2 is an actor. 
<coughs> but in the end, we didn't have any the last point. We still believe that beta-2 is not toxic. We tested in several models of the cells. There were no activity. So we use it as a bit a marker of inflammation. Interleukin-6. Interleukin-6, uh, similar story. Increase gradually with the progression of renal disease. Maybe dialysis uh, by itself have a decrease slightly the level of uh, IL-6 but still higher. Similar uh, predictive effect of uh, all cause mortality and cardiovascular mortality, even if you adjust for different marker. Actually, it's interesting. We look in the same cohort and different marker of inflammation. All of you are aware we are working with CRP or with some people working with TNF and some people work in albumin as negative uh, uh, marker of inflammation. And as you can see, the, the best ever seen uh, for inflammation is IL-6. CRP and TNF didn't show up in albumin slightly. So if you want to explore inflammation in your patient, don't go to CRP, don't do TNF, don't do IL-1, I don't speak about IL-1 here, go straight to IL-6. We are having a discussion with the company who are doing, it's easy to do, but you need to convince <laughs> the government to reimburse this uh, evaluation of the level of IL-6, because we believe this is important. And I, why we, it's important for us, because as you know, we are start to have a new drug to modify inflammation so a specific uh, drug to anti-IL-6 is available in general population. So it's maybe time to think is if you want to have a trial in this patient to modify the level of IL-6. And that's not for only for us, Carmine Zocali group have the similar story. They look for CRP, uh, IL-1, and the best marker of IL-6. So keep in mind, if you have inflammation and you want to explore inflammation in your patient, the best one is IL-6. FGF23. FGF23 is a hormone discovered recently, secreted by osteocyte, increased gradually since early on, reached the maximum in dialysis, returned to the normal after a transplantation. And FGF23 have a complex story. Initially, the, everyone had this war associated with independent of phosphate. FGF23 physiological role is to eliminate phosphate, like PTH. But uh, people show that FGF23 is important uh, for uh, cardiac disease in our patient, and its uh, cardiovascular mortality increased gradually when, when the FGF23 increased. However, I should say some recent data showing it's maybe FJF23 is not the player. Because some people show that if you have disease in some tissue, like kidney or heart, you can, this diseased tissue can increase secretion of FJF23. So we still have no clue what the role of FJF23. There are some antibodies used an animal model for FGF23. The problem is when they uh, use this FGF23, they increase the mortality and increase the, the calcification. So we still wait for drug to modify the level FGF23 to explore in our patient. Light chains, light chains, uh, everyone is familiar with light chain with the myeloma. But here I show you light chain in our patient without myeloma, it's increased gradually since stage two, reach up maximum 5D. This is, uh, I think, uh, kappa, and this is one lambda. Not at the level what you see in myeloma, but this light chain is present higher in our patient. Light chain is very important because it is activating leukocyte to secrete inflammation. So very important uh, uh, step to see 
that we look about this correlation with this slide chain uh, with different model. It's here, and you can see that uh, uh, kappa or uh, lambda uh, it uh, was significant, but it disappeared. I think kappa was one, and still uh, disappear when you have inflammation in model three. So we don't know the role of uh, uh, the, the chain. It's, it is more important to modify the uh, light chain or to modify the inflammation in this patient. Some of this uh, middle molecules is increased, like myoglobulin. Myoglobulin increase uh, gradually. Again, myoglobulin, we see it in rhabdomyolysis, but it uh, can just, when you have uh, in the decrease of GFR, you have an increase of myoglobulin. Uh, myoglobin can predict in more uh, on univariate analysis the mortality, but it, if you have inflammation, it disappears. So keep in mind, it's not only uh, all this middle molecule would play a role. We believe that, uh, let's say, hot uh, molecules for, for middle molecules is related to light chain in IL-6. FGF-23, we need to wait further. And beta-2 microglobulin could be just a marker. I don't have time to speak about other middle molecules, but uh, it's open if you want to ask a question. So just take who message uremia and uremic syndrome is are at, in part related to retention of several molecules, not only urea. <coughs> Some of this uh, molecule is difficult to clear by what we use, I even hemodialysis or hemodiafiltration. And, uh, and, but this molecule has play a role in the cardiovascular complication and other uremic complication. I summarize to you this, what we did in our work. Uh, IL-6, beta-2, FGF-23, they are associated with pulse wave velocity, calcification, and mortality, independent or other factor. Myoglobin in ages is not, uh, have a, seem to have play a good role, and at least in cardiovascular complication. So uh, it's this huge work done by many uh, postdoc and uh, the PhD people. I uh, thank this uh, two Brazilian, Felipe and Daniela uh, Barreto, Sophie Liabeuf, who is my close collaborator at Amiens, and uh, the other uh, Rodrigo, who, uh, uh, who was also from Brazil. And thank you very much for your attention. There's no question.